Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a early impression video, or well, it's nighttime, so it could be a late night insight right now, but um, it is on a slumber house fragrance. So this is a house that is one of those artisanal houses. So, you know, I think you could more lump them in with the Arige La Dore's and Insars and, you know, Bortnikoff's and stuff like that. Then you could the Dior Chanel Guerlain's, you know, of the world, L'Envon and stuff like that. They're more to the artisanal side. It's run by a gentleman named Josh Loeb. And um, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Slumber House, uh, I respect Josh as a perfumer. And definitely I respect his attitude towards his running of his business. And basically the way he does it is like this. I'm going to put these out whenever I want, wherever I want, however I want. And um, if there's a bottle available, whenever you want it, great. If not, sorry for you. Uh, his attitude is sort of kind of, I'm going to do this my way and that's that. And he has a big, deep disdain for the perfume industry in general and what has happened to perfume. And to be quite frank, I don't think he really likes YouTube uh, Fragcom either uh, from, from what I've heard. I think he thinks uh, that a lot of the circle jerk, if you will, in Fragcom is uh, off-putting. And, and it can be with the free bottles and all that stuff and the stuff that they say being disingenuous and stuff like that. But um, it is a review. It's an honor to get to review these fragrances for me because uh, I actually have purchased zero Slumber House fragrances in my life, mostly because uh, they're very hard to find. Very, very hard. And every time he does a new iteration, he puts out a new bottle, which I respect, because then it's easier to kind of tell, hey, this is this version, this is that version, kind of the way that Arige La Dore does it, that Russian Adam does it, where he does, you know, number one, number two, number three, they're in different bottles sometimes and stuff like that, right? So today we're going to talk about my favorite Slumber House fragrance that I have stumbled across so far, and the only reason I've even had a chance to smell this is thanks to my good friend Nick, who has very generously sent me sample after sample after sample of different fragrances I never would have been able to smell if not for him. So thank you, Nick. Special shout out to you, my friend. Um, and this one's called Sibet. Now, if you are a Parfumo user, like I am, and if you actually go to Parfumo and type in Slumber House Sibet, you'll notice that the fragrance that comes up is New Sibet. And probably the first thing that you would think about is that, well, uh, maybe this is like the vintage bottle of Sibet. It's actually the other way around. So, New Sibet came out in 2016. Sibet, which is the version that I have here, came out last year in 2022. Uh, and so, his fragrances do get sold through Lucky Scent, but they go very quickly. When, when Lucky Scent gets any bottles, they go very fast. So, sometimes it's kind of one of those things, kind of like a Riz La Dore. You really have to be on the trigger. You have to be on the mailing list, if you will, and you have to move quick. You know, you have no hesitation when, if you want to get some of these slumber houses at retail. Now, you can go pay double or triple and still find a bottle now on the secondary market, but if you want them at retail, you got to move quick. They used to be, I think, $120 for 30 mil. Uh, when those old robes videos came out a decade ago, I think they were 120 and then I think they became 160 Now they're 180 for 30 mils, which is still expensive. But as far as niche pricing goes nowadays, it's not as expensive as, you know, it, as what we are getting accustomed to in the perfume world. So this is basically what the bottles look like. Uh, this is the only slumber house I have in my collection. It's called Norn. I will review this one of these days. Um, and I like Sibet just for the record, uh, way more than I like Norn. So if I could switch a full bottle of this in, from this, I absolutely would. But I still want to review this first before I, um, you know, do anything with it. But Norn um, was sent to me by a friend. It was actually uh, sent to me by uh, Jeff. So thank you, Jeff. Very, very kind to you, my friend. I will review that one of these days. And so I believe this is my second Slumber House review on the channel. I reviewed a fragrance called Ore from the House of Slumber House from the House of Slumber House, of course. Uh, and so, or was kind of like a chocolatey gourmand thing. You can go check out my review of that. But interestingly enough, uh, the house is di divisive. It can be. There was a um, person who basically tried to talk shit to me and put one of my videos up on, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Oh, de jerks or something. And it was funny because he put a video up uh, on Francesca Bianchi saying, hey, this is, 
the only video this guy does and he thinks he knows everything on the house and and it's the only one he smelled and then but he didn't do any research the video right before it was a different francesca bianchi fragrance i think i had done two or three reviews but uh, one of the things he said in the comments that cracked me up is he goes oh and he was obviously new to my channel but he goes oh i checked your list and i knew you were one of those guys who likes slumber house you know and and but imagine like Oh, you're one of those guys who likes Slumber House? There must be something wrong with you, right? Uh, that's how some people view the house, that it's just an insane, crazy, out-there house. Which, honestly, I like those type of houses. I like the houses that try different things and take different risks and, and you know, you know, even if it causes them to jump off a cliff and create something weird and, and completely out of whack, I enjoy uh, the effort, if you will. And, and Josh Loeb definitely gets an A for effort for me. Uh, for, for doing his creations that he does. Now, is he, you know, top uh, mixer and is he master blender? Uh, no, I mean, he's not, you're, you're not going to be able to compare a Slumber House fragrance with, you know, um, Jacques Polge or Olivier Polge or Christopher Sheldrake's level of blending, right? This is a little different type of perfume creation. Uh, but I would consider this an artisanal house. I would just put it you know, for me, the Aris Ladores, the Ensars, the old Bortnikovs before whatever is going on with the house now has has sort of taken over. Old Bortnikov, I would put one rung on the ladder ahead of a house like Slumber House. Slumber House is a house I still enjoy, but uh, they're not onto the Aris level yet. But that's still the category that they play in. They just do things a little differently. They don't use as much oud. That's the other thing. So they create stuff like this. So, that, so, so, so far I've tried three slumber houses. Or, Norn, and now Sibet. And this is my favorite of the bunch, hands down. And actually, uh, if you have watched many of my videos, over and over I tell you it's very important to know the taste of your reviewer. Because if you go buy and buy stuff based on a reviewer that you're watching saying, oh, I absolutely love this, you know, you have to be ready and accounting for that person's taste because taste plays a, a big role in it. And if you know me and my taste, you know a couple things about me. Number one, I have a very high tolerance for animalics. So whereas most people would smell something and go, oh my God, I can't believe you would wear that. I smell it and go, hmm, that smells great. More animalics, please, right? Um, and so this is one of those fragrances. I, I saw somebody even say that this is the most animalic and challenging fragrance he has ever smelled. And I'm like, what? No, no way. I don't think that at all about this. Um, but just FYI, there are some people out there that say that, you know, this is the most challenging fragrance they've ever smelled. Now, I disagree with that, at least in this version, okay? The 2022 version that I'm smelling, Sibet. New Sibet may have been completely different, but um, Sibet, I, uh, I would not consider this anywhere near the most challenging fragrance. I would consider this a vintage style, almost like a, a leather Sheepra done in an artisanal style, okay? And so what's interesting about this is if you know some of these vintage leathery, leather and iris fragrances really is where I'll leave it at. So uh, imagine vintage Caron Tabac Blonde. Or imagine something like this. This is a um, a Dior called Queer Canage. I'm going to review this very soon, hopefully. But Queer Canage is, it's so good. It's probably one of my favorite uh, privés. Uh, and it's um, iris, orange blossom, leather. And, you know, Francois Demachy did a fantastic job with this one. And, of course, I think a year later, Roja ended up putting out his take on it. He calls it a Russian leather uh, but it's very close to Queer Canage. It's um, Roja's Great Britain, which again, I think I've reviewed this. If if I didn't, there is a comparison video on my channel between Great Britain and um, Queer de Russie by Chanel. Okay, so there's an interesting comparison video uh, between the two. But um, Great Britain is a fantastic fragrance. It's just completely overpriced. But I want you to imagine that a... Uh, artisanal house does a take on that style, okay? So that iris leather style, but done in an artisanal house where they take chances and do weird things. So for example, the first weird thing you're going to notice when Sibet hits your skin, it's so good though. I love this scent profile, this DNA. So the first thing you're going to notice is that it opens up with mint and this very smoky, ashy, Slightly leathery, slightly irisy 
Uh, there's actually a pretty heavy dose of iris, and it feels like you're smelling iris mixed with carrot seed, okay? But imagine iris mixed with carrot seed set on fire. So it, the carrot is sort of burning and turning. Let's say you're, you're not just cooking the carrot, you're absolutely incinerating it. You've got the oven turned up to a thousand degrees, and as soon as you stick the carrot in, it just goes, you know, it's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. It just catches fire and, and turns to ash, right? That's a little bit of the opening with that vintage old school leather Shepra feel. Okay, so try to try to picture that. Slightly powdery uh, with that mint note. And the mint note is very interesting because it adds this um, freshening effect. There's a little bit of a freshness to the top, which you wouldn't expect. Uh, and sometimes mint in a fragrance can put people off because they think it smells like toothpaste or this, that, or whatever. This is nothing of the sort. Uh, the mint here is actually very well done. And probably the note that gets the most attention in this fragrance is a uh, note that is also really focused on the artisanal houses. You almost never see this note used in any of the uh, more designer scents. You'd never see this in a Dior or anything like that, I don't think. Uh, the only houses I've seen use it are stuff like Prin Lomros's house uh, and Slumber House. And then, of course, there's a perfume from the house of... Uh, T-S-V-G-A. I believe that's pronounced Suga is how he pr prefers to pronounce it. Um, but Suga has a fragrance called Fiona. And this is another one that I will review that has a, a goat hair's tincture note. And so um, goat hair is supposed to add this cheesy... Uh, so imagine like goat milk or goat cheese. Furry, slightly animalic feeling. Almost like you're petting the goat with a little bit of a sparkle. So you know how um, the idea of ambergris, when you add it to a fragrance, gives it that sort of ambergris sparkle in the top? Goat hair tincture does a similar thing, but uh, very artisanal smell, okay? So uh, this, is, this is going to take, that's why I say imagine this style of fragrance with that iris, leather, vintage Caron, uh, Tabac Blonde, or Queer Canage, um, with that hip, excuse me, heavy artisanal um, twist, if you will, okay? Uh, and so that is how the opening begins. And um, so basically what happens is with that goat hair tincture, imagine that you're smelling the hair of a rutting billy goat, a bit cheesy, a bit milky and animalic, okay? And furry and animalic. And that iris note is absolutely drop dead beautiful. I just did a fresh spray before I started the, the video because I love the first couple hours of this fragrance. Absolutely love it. Um, the leather from the, so what I really like about it is you get the leather from the very first spray, right? And so you know how some fragrances you have to kind of wait four or five hours in, into the dry down to really get the leather? I've got about a five hour dry down here and it turns into a, it goes in a little different direction to me. We'll talk about that and how the fragrance progresses here in a second. But from here, that Iris Accord just enhances the leather right from the word go. My favorite part of this fragrance is the first two to three hours. First two to three hours is really the meat of this fragrance as far as I'm concerned. And um, you don't have to wait for the leather accord to hit you. It's there from the beginning, which I absolutely love. And it's, it, it's, it's using this iris to enhance the leather, but there's also a note of carrot seed that enhances the iris, okay? So the iris enhances the leather, the carrot seed enhances the iris. And the carrot seed feels like you took some of those carrots that didn't get incinerated and turned to ash, and you stuck them in a blender, all right? And you turned it on for a little bit, just enough to make it into sort of a pulpy juice, but not enough to make it smooth, right? There's still like chunks of, excuse me, um, sort of this fatty, uh, pulpy carrot, excuse me, if you've ever made a carrot juice, right, um, and, you know, you blend up carrots for the carrot juice and you make them fresh in your own kitchen, that kind of thing, right, and you know how if you don't put the blender on to make it go too far, too, too uh, heavy with the blender, it leaves that pulpiness, kind of that fatty pulpiness, that's how the carrot smells, the carrot seed smells in this fragrance. It almost feels pulpy and heavy, like there's a weight, there's a fatty weight to the, to the carrot seed, and it adds to the iris effect. Because carrot seed can also be slightly powdery. Um, it's a trick that many um, perfumers use to try and enhance that iris feel without using the very expensive iris note itself, right? And so, 
Um, speaking of fatty, I know I said the carrot can sometimes feel fat, you know, heavy and fatty and pulpy when, when you smell it. And that's absolutely true. But um, there's also another note that smells slightly fatty in this composition, and it's the civet. All right. So even though there's no civet listed, they, they list an animalic fur accord, if they will. Um, but I get a civet note to my nose. There is this animalic civet. Um, and I love civet, you know, it's, it's one of those animalic notes that, um, depending on how it's used, it can, you know, there are some fragrance houses and some, um, uh, perfume examples that use civet that feel a little bit much. Like I did a review of Ducita's Oud Infini in the first couple, about a couple weeks ago. Um, and that fragrance feels like the, um, civet note is just a little you know, overdose, too overdose there, too pissy and too animalic. But um, here it's done to perfection and the civet feels fatty. So it almost feels like animal blubber to me. And so imagine in the perfume that you have this realistic leather feel and under that leather that you're, that you're touching, you're touching like this blubbery animal fat. That's what the civet feels like in this composition and so imagine playing with this layer this this leather layer and underneath it is the fatty sort of blubber of a sea lion or like a walrus just imagine that sea lion imagine the fat walrus sitting on the beach right and instead of having the walrus skin it's like leather like proper leather right and you're pushing down on it and you get blubber that's the way that the uh civet interplays with the leather in in Sibet, S-I-B-E-T. Um, and so I uh, purposely say that this fragrance has a sort of musky tilt to it as well because the fatty animalic note almost gives it a musk, musky feel as well. But um, that muskiness, when you, when you look through the note listing, there's no civet listed, there's no musk note listed, if you will. And um, if, if you look at goat hair tincture, and what it's supposed to bring to the table, the effects it's supposed to have on a perfume. Goat hair tincture can sometimes come across as musky. And so if you've watched some of my videos where I talk about real musk, and I've done uh, a video where I focus on only fragrances that use real, the real musk pod, okay? Not synthetic musk, which I actually really like the synthetic musk as well, but the real musk just brings something irreplaceable. Whenever you smell real musk in a fragrance, it's like, divine. I mean, it's like, it's so rare and hard to find that um, anytime you've smelled some of these real musk fragrances that like Ensar or Arige does or stuff like that, I mean, it's literally like an experience. It's like, it's like wearing an experience. Um, and you just cannot replace what real musk does. But uh, this goat hair tincture does something very interesting because it sort of adds this, um, this warmth, this sort of furry, animalic warmth that is slightly powdery, slightly sour, right? There's a little bit of the sourness to this fragrance as well. So imagine ashy, leathery, uh, powdery, slightly sour, and um, just imagine a little bit pissy, just slightly pissy from the civet, uh, but it's blended beautifully. I think this is the best blending I've smelled of any of the Slumber House fragrances personally. And it's almost like, you know, you're taking your hands and instead of rubbing it on the fur of the deer, you're rubbing it on the goat hair, the rutting billy goat, if you will, um, while it's eating its hay or whatever the, whatever the hell it's deciding to eat at the time, right? While it, while it grazes. Um, and believe it or not, goat hair tincture actually also works as a fixative. So it kind of plays the same role as ambergris, but it gives a slightly inky tilt as well. There's almost like this... Um, there's almost like this inkiness then in the background and a surprisingly uh, long lasting fixative. You can, you can smell the animalic note well, well into the dry down. Um, and if you look at the name Sibet, S-I-B-E-T, if you look at the name Sibet, the very first thing I was talking about this with uh, Rich Mitch, my brother from another mother, and he said he thought it was a brilliant name. He's never smelled Sibet. Um, but, but he said that in other cultures, sometimes the V sound, civet, uh, can sometimes sound like a B, or they pronounce it as a B, right? So civet. And um, using the S at the beginning, 
instead of using the C for civet and naming it civet, I think is a very um, shifty, brilliant little naming, uh, you know, um, exercise that Josh Loeb went through here. And it kind of hints at being that animalic smell, right? Civet, civet, uh, without just calling it civet, right? It, it's something I think, I, I like the name, let's put it that way. Um, and so actually what's interesting about the name too is it does hint into the dry down because what happens, so that, that was the opening we were talking about. The fragrance almost completely does a 180 and it loses all of its sort of irisy, powdery, um, minty aspects. Even that ashy, leathery uh, bit tends to fall off. And what it transitions to is a fragrance that focuses on a couple things. So the first thing it focuses on is that animalic civet note into the dry down. It really feels like you're smelling civet with oak moss and labdanum. Labdanum uh, or this ambery like accord, if you will. Um, and so the, the fragrance basically goes through two main transitions where the first one is the opening and then the second one is into the dry down. And that opening lasts two or three hours. That's the meat of the fragrance, if you will. Uh, and, and so what happens into the dry down is uh, that big, high, beautiful, classy, powdery, animalic, old school, irisy leather falls off. And you're sort of left with this furry animalic civet with a twist. And the twist is this sort of uh, deep green oak moss and ambery labdanum. That's basically the composition, right? Uh, the moss feels very deep green and, and textured to my nose as you smell it into the dry down. Yeah. But the civet note is prominent. I get a lot of civet into the dry down. Uh, and much has been made of this ash note, like I said, and there definitely is a little bit of an ashy note, but I get it mostly in the beginning of the fragrance. It almost feels like the iris is, um, you know, it almost feels like the iris is charred or that carrot seed we were talking about earlier, the carrot is uh, incinerated into ash, if you will. If It doesn't go much into the dry down though, that's the thing. I really feel like it loses a little bit of that ashiness, at least on my skin. If you want my recommendation for a proper ash fragrance, not incense, but straight up ash, I would say check out this. This is Amouage Myths Man. I'll review this one as well. This is on my uh, never ending to review list of um, of, of Amouages. But, um, you know, to, to me, the ashiness really comes through in the first hour or so, and then it begins to, to dry down. The other green part of this fragrance that I forgot to mention is the carnation. So there's a very green carnation note, almost like you took the um, the stems and leaves of the carnation flower, chopped off the flower, and just put those stems and leaves into the blender with that carrot seed, like I was mentioning earlier, and blended it up. And it comes out as being um, almost like you're smelling carnation absolute, right? The heavier, deeper greener absolute. Uh, that's what the carnation note in Sibet smells like. So let me just read you the blurb because it's actually really hard to find information on uh, the House of Slumber House, right? But luckily Lucky Scent, uh, luckily Lucky Scent does have a little blurb on it. So I just want to read this to you uh, so you kind of have an idea of a, of a proper blurb according to what Lucky Scent and Slumber House have to say. So here's the scoop. So it says, Slumber House has built their mythic reputation on unpredictability. Josh Loeb's scents are unencumbered by the restrictions of the fragrance Intelligentsia. It makes them sound like the, um, uh, the SS or something. The fragrance Intelligentsia. So while the uh, name and notes list of, of, of uh, Sibet might indicate a pungently animalic bomb of a scent, don't jump to conclusions. Spray it on your skin and allow yourself to get lost wandering the root-lined hallways of an ancient library long since overtaken by nature. This is the first time I'm reading this, by the way. Smell the hazy glow of leather-bound tombs written in long-dead languages, the dust dancing in the sunlight that peeks through the vine-choked windows. The animalic notes are here as promised, but rather than growling with vitality, they hum with mature contentment. Rich and understated, curled on the soft moss that coats the ground. No, new Sibet, sorry, or Sibet, 
doesn't have the dazzling primary colors or rich syrupiness that characterize so many of the past releases. Instead, in its evocative ability to weave a tale steeped in imagination and sumptuous fantasy, it is undeniably a slumber house. Okay, so there you have it. That is the um, little blurb, if you will, according to Lucky Scent. Sold out. Um, but uh, really, really enjoyed getting to know it. It is definitely, hands down, without a question, my favorite slumber house. Uh, if I could have a full bottle of any of the ones I've smelled so far, or Norn, or uh, Sibet, it would be Sibet. So uh, if you have experience with this, I know, like I said at the beginning, so Slumber House is one of those brands that is very divisive, okay? So if you have experience with the house of Slumber House, or Sibet in particular, leave a comment. If you hate Slumber House, I would love for you to leave a comment and tell us why. There are some Slumber House fragrances that I think are very challenging. I will review Norn very soon, and that will come out in that review. But um, I also think there's some that are well done, worth it for someone who likes to go off the beaten path and smell things that are different and unique. And, you know, if you're one of those people who complain about Fragrance house is smelling the same and all, oh, you know, Aventus Absolute smells like the Sauvage Elixir. Or, you know, if you're one of those people and you're like, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm tired of, tired of the, you know, being the hamster on the wheel and all these houses wanting to charge you $500 for juice that smells the same. Check out the house of Slumber House. Check out the house of Arige Ladore. Check out the house of Ensar Oud. Check out Rising Phoenix. Check out Bortnikov. You know, those are the artisanal houses you kind of have to go to if you want to get off the hamster wheel. So um, I love doing these reviews, and I know they can be challenging for some folks because of the fact that it's limited to find this juice. It's hard, you know, these last three reviews I've done have been on very, very hard to find juices, fragrances. Um, but you know, I think it's important because this, that's the point of this whole channel. It's following me and my journey and documenting it and also sharing my thoughts. So if in the future a bottle comes up for sale, cause that's how you're going to have to find this. I mean, if you want this fragrance, you're going to have to get somebody who is breaking up a collection and maybe you find a vintage of new Sabet, or maybe you find the newer one, Sabet from 2022. And uh, you have to sort of buy it maybe blind or in these videos help people, I think, understand the scent profile and what it is and all that stuff. And it puts my opinion um, on record, if you will, puts it on on paper for posterity. So that's the point of this fragrance channel is I really want to create a little bit of a library where you can go. What you've noticed is if you go to my playlists, you'll actually find that each house has its own playlist. So, for example, Slumber House has a playlist, Amwage has a playlist, Creed has a playlist, you know, so forth and so on. So you can look through them and see all my reviews for Arise Ladore or Bortnikov or, you know, in one playlist. So I want it to be a little bit of a library for people where they can come see my thoughts and get my honest uh, reviews that are not paid for. All of the reviews are my own um, and 99% of these bottles I bought with my own money. And, and the stuff that I didn't buy, most of them were that, the, that I did not buy were given to me by friends in the community. Like, for example, Jeff is a great uh, example of that. You know, he sent me this. So whether I say anything good, bad, or indifferent about it, he doesn't care. I mean, he's just a, a friend and a subscriber. He's not a company sending me this to get a good review. And the House of Slumber House wouldn't. They don't, they don't do that kind of stuff anyways. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's my take. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the house, the whole artisanal versus niche versus designer debate. And if you've had a chance to smell this rare juice, I'd love to hear your thoughts on if you love it as much as I do, or you know if it's kind of a challenging scent for you and what you make of the profile. So thank you everyone for watching. Cheers guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.